episode 2 of my video game Flappertron available right now on Steam. We are now in 2020. Hashtag New Year, New Me. Obviously, I don't believe in that stuff. Like, you know what? New Year, New Me. You know what? Anyone who puts that hashtag, just no. Because you're going to be the exact same person. Let's be honest here. And you know what? If you want to make a change that badly, you can do it at any point. It hasn't got to be just at the start of New Year. So, wow. I'm going to tangent right now. Speaking of, hashtag New Year, New Me. Let's talk about Rise of Skywalker. So I know I'm late to the party on this and everybody's spoken about it. I even watched some reviews of it, of the film, before I watched the movie myself. I didn't want any spoilers, right? Everybody was telling me, well, from what I saw as well, that it was a terrible film, worse than The Last Jedi. And apparently it didn't take any risks and it's just kind of boring. So I just thought, you know what? I'll just look at the spoilers. I'll see what happens in the film. So I Googled it and yeah, I was like, right. This is the film. Yeah, nothing exciting really happens or, you know, stuff that's pretty obvious is going to happen happens. So I didn't really care that much to see it because basically I flew to Dubai for my holiday like a day or two before it came out. I was going to watch it in Dubai. So yeah, I've, I saw it a couple of days ago and I want to share my thoughts on it because I've got quite a few, but I don't want to... I don't want to retread ground, you know, like lots of people have spoken about this, you know, if you want like a really in-depth conversation, go watch Red Letter Media or something like that, or a quick one, Jeremy Johns is pretty good with that kind of stuff, but this is my opinions, my thoughts, my take on it, if you will, but god damn, I'll tell you what, the first 40 minutes was some of the worst I've ever seen in a film, I was, I was exhausted, honestly, when, but I spoilers for the whole video because I don't, I, I don't want to like pussyfoot around stuff. There was a part where I forgot her name now. I don't remember the chick's name. She's the chick on the horse, and she comes up. She's like, "Who are you?" And it's like, I was like, "Oh, here we go again." The whole movie is find the plot thing, and then someone goes, "Who are you?" And they get kidnapped, or they, you know, something happens and they get out of it. It's just, it was just the same shit over and over, and it just got so boring. The exposition was just mad. The Oh, I just hated the first 40 minutes. I remember just sighing and just making fun of it. There were two parts that made me laugh, though. Laugh out loud. Because that's one thing. This film wasn't very funny. The Last Jedi, I think, made me laugh out loud. when uh, I think when the rocks fell and hit the little alien people on the, that planet Luke was on. I remember going, ha ha ha, laughing about that. I'm sure there are a few moments I liked on it. But... This movie wasn't very funny at all. I only laughed once, uh, twice, sorry, and both times were from weird aliens making stupid noises because I have the brain of a five-year-old, I guess. It's a bar when they're like in a ship at the beginning with Finn and Barry, some random, uh, and then he <laughs> gets to this alien who's going like, Aah! like in the ship, and me and Chris, sorry, Chris, who just burst out laughing. Like, the only people, well, again, there's like, seven people in the cinema, so I mean, it's not like there was a lot of competition for that, but um, yeah, it, that bit, and there was also an alien later on where someone said something, oh, I was being so vague here, someone said something to the thing, the thing, um, I think, I don't know, one of the, one of the characters walked up and said, can you do this, and the alien went, okay, oh sorry Dylan, my, I made my dog jump, sorry Dylan, he's on the couch right now, you can't see him, and yeah, for some reason that really tickled me, and I thought that was really fucking funny, um, so, I guess it's just catered to my humor with that stupid stuff. But yeah, the first 40 minutes was abysmal. I was just like, what is going on? The biggest problem with the film is that it just literally goes, right, find this random item. And then go to this random place. And then stuff happens. And it happens, it literally happens so quick that your brain can't really process what's happening. I mean, even for like, I've got very quick, you know, I, I'm fine with fast-paced stuff. I mean, half my job is making fast-paced things, right? But I, even I was like, God, can it just slow down for two seconds to catch my breath? And like, the only point I remember being like, okay, finally, I can chill a little bit was when Luke showed up. But even that didn't make any sense. Luke shows up and he grabs a lightsaber. What the... I guess they could do the lightning. Oh, I don't know, man. Just... It's such a mess. Ray is kind of boring in this. Finn has no story arc. I like Poe Dameron, but again, it is not that great. He's just like the best out of some boring, a boring few. You know, stuff like why have Ray fights herself and like a weird kind of vision. I mean, do you know what I mean? It's stuff that you see in the trailer where you're like, well, that's obviously a vision and it is a vision. You're like, oh, right. 
Do you know what I mean? That kind of stuff is, I find very annoying because it's so obvious. Like, Emperor Palpatine's back? Why is the... Why? He's dead. <sighs> He's hooked up to some weird machine. There's, that's the problem. This quest, the question, this movie has way too many questions, things that are unexplained, and, th and it has to explain a lot of shit as well. Like, when Leia's walking off, and then Maz, whatever, goes, she has to use all her strength now. Blah, 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 she's going to die, basically. It's like, it's just so fucking weird. Why are you, like, t the rating what she's going to do? I know Carrie Fisher's dead, I get it, but you could have done that in a better way. Just have her walk off and then do the Ben thing and die. I don't need Maz, whatever her goddamn name is, to be like, oh, she's going to die now. Also, why give Chewie the medal at the end? That, that part was so lame when she gave Chewie that medal. This is for you. Like, what? Are you serious? It's like taking weird things like YouTubers talk about, like, oh, isn't it funny when like, Chewie never got his medal and putting it in the video? Why? Star Wars doesn't need that stuff in it. To be fair, just, uh, I don't know. It's, it's, it's a very frustrating film because the more I think about it, the more I get annoyed. The, the best part of the film by a mile was still Adam Driver as Kylo Ren. My dog wants to go down. Here you go, deal boy. Oh, there you go, boy. Uh, Adam Driver as Kylo Ren. I think, I know I might get some shit for this. I have no idea because people love the original so much. I absolutely love Kylo Ren. He's my favorite Star Wars character ever. I like him more than Han. I like him more than Luke, Leia. Every character on Star Wars, Kylo Ren's my favorite. I think he's great. I think Adam Driver's amazing as him. I think he actually gives a lot of depth to that character. I just really, really like Kylo Ren. And that's why I was really excited to be like, oh yeah, I can see more Kylo and stuff. And I like this, his art kind of in this. Like, yeah, it was fine. L they did him okay. He wasn't the best. He wasn't the worst. I liked him a lot more in episode seven. But, you know, hey, I'm, the beggars at this point cannot be choosers in the slightest. Beggars can't be beggars at this point. I just feel like it's just such a weird film. They introduce too much shit. That just doesn't make any sense. Why can Rey heal people? And she heals a worm. Why can Rey shoot lightning i mean fuck i know she's a palpatine and all that stuff but i mean come on like the, the lightning i thought was you know palpatine could do it because he's mastered the the sith arts she hasn't she did one training montage where she cuts a little ribbon and then she gives up anyway or something i just <sighs> i will say the last 40 minutes or so didn't save the film but it definitely made me like it a bit more i didn't mind the last kind of half um you know the emperor wasn't that great in this he's kind of like he wasn't weird enough like he is in the prequels to be super entertaining but he also, he wasn't subdued enough like the old ones he's just got that weird middle ground and i don't know i didn't really find him that endearing or that exciting the emperor <sighs> i don't know I, I, I do feel like it got better toward the end. I did, I, I did, it wrapped up and I was like, okay, fine. It's, it's a weird film because it's almost like the film has to wrap up all these questions and change things and whatever to fix the problems of the, the previous film, and which it succeeds in. So if we're looking at it in that way, then yeah, the movie succeeds and the movie's great because it did fix that. But the... The biggest kick in the teeth for me, where I'm just like, I don't understand this film, is at the end, when the, the old woman comes up, she goes, who are you? And she looks over to, to her, and she goes, Ray. She goes, Ray who? And she goes, Ray Skywalker. Well, you're not Ray Skywalker, you're a Palpatine, and I get it, you know, Luke and whatever, honor their memory, but you didn't know Luke that well. You didn't know Leia that well, as far as we know. I mean, yeah, you did training with her, apparently, but we, we didn't see the interaction. I know Carrie Fisher's dead, blah, 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 but it's... It doesn't translate that well in the movie, you know? Like, people are going to watch that in 20 years, like, kids and that, and they... Do you know what I mean? Like, when you take that out, if you don't know the context for that. And you can so tell that all of all the scenes are really phoned in as well, like, you know. Which, again, they did do a good job with Carrie Fisher, to be honest. But I, I still could tell they were working around the lines, you know? And it just it was really weird to me. I just think... Anyway, so I, I want to trap it. I want to trap it. I want to topic. I can't even speak. So... The whole point of the, the film was to accept who you are, you know? Like, oh, Ray, I'm Ray Palpatine. Yeah, at the end, she says Skywalker, which goes against the entire plot of the film. Goes against the entire meaning of the film, right? Accept yourself and who you are. 
Well, you didn't. You changed your name to Skywalker. You're a Palpatine. Say Palpatine. I don't, I don't, I don't understand. There's such strange, baffling choices like this throughout the film. And it's weird because I, I, as much as people shit on it for some reason, I absolutely love Episode 7. Episode 7 is my favorite Star Wars film. And loads of people are like, what the fuck? In the comments, probably ready now to get the pitchforks out. But I loved Episode 7. When I saw it, I was like, this is amazing. I love Kylo Ren in this. The snow guy's really weird. Ray's a bit of a meh, but no, she's getting, she's quite interesting. I like her backstory. I like the first bit when she's scavenging. I like Finn in this. I like Poe. I, I liked all the characters in Episode 7. And I liked the fight scenes in Episode 7. I liked the dialogue. I really liked Episode 7, even though it's a remake of the fourth one. I mean, if I'm completely honest, I didn't, I didn't even grow up with the original movies. I watched than when I was a kid, like really young, so I barely even remembered them. My very first proper Star Wars film was actually The Phantom Menace, and then um, the second one and third one. But I wasn't—I was never—I was never even a big Star Wars fan. I only watched the second movie because it was someone's birthday, and I watched the third film, uh, Revenge of the Sith, because it was my, my my dad took me to see it. And then I only saw the originals when my dad was like, "Hey, do you want to watch the originals?" Because I bought them on like, the new DVDs or whatever. So. I didn't really grow up with this, the old Star Wars films. I didn't really have like a nostalgic attachment to them. I watched The Empire Strikes Back. I was like, that film was great. I love The Empire Strikes Back. I like the I liked the episode four as well. Don't really like Turn the Jedi apart from the bits with Luke. I hate the part with Jabba and I think it's just really lame. I don't really like Return the Jedi very much apart from the, the last part with Luke. Um, so people who have so much nostalgia for the old ones, it definitely blinds them for some of these new ones. Like for someone like me who has no attachment, Episode 7 is a good film. I don't care if they're rehashing Episode 4 because I had no attachment to Episode 4. I barely even remembered Episode 4 when I saw Episode 7. It was only after Episode 7 I became a really big Star Wars fan and I started playing the games more and looking at the lore and you know, liking the like Battlefront games and just buying all the Star wars stuff, you know? So, anyway, enough about that. Let's go back to Rise of Skywalker. I, I, I'm just... I don't know if... J.J. Abrams potentially made the best film he could have with what he had. And this is the one thing I'm, you know, I'm a bit on because, again, Episode 7, in my opinion, is great. I don't care if you hate it, whatever. Last Jedi, it's bollocks. Last Jedi is a bad film. It had a few good moments in it. But as a whole, it's just not a good film. The Last Jedi is not a good film. And it's just weird how much he fucked it up for the next film. It's just weird. It's like... The, the whole trilogy just doesn't even need to exist. In my mind, I almost just want to watch episode seven and then pretend Last Jedi and Rise of Skywalker. Then again, I don't, you know what it is? I thought the best analogy here, and there's two, there's two analogies for this film, Rise of Skywalker. I don't mind it. I don't hate it, but I don't really like it that much. It, I just don't mind it. Last Jedi really bothered me when I came out and I was driving home after I saw it at midnight, by the way. I was so excited for episode 8 because episode 7, I just loved it. And it was really, I thought it was going to set up all the stuff with Snoke. I loved Kylo Ren, like I said. It was awful. And I was, I was really pissed off to the point where it kind of, I didn't care about episode, seeing this new episode. And that's why I didn't care. That's why I've only just seen it. Because I didn't care anymore. But I don't mind it. But if I had to explain the first, like, 40 minutes to an hour... Because there's so much going on. I recently went to Dubai on holiday, like I said earlier. There was a roller coaster there at IMG World, if you've been there before, a Spider Man ride. And seriously, it went so fast and it was like spinning and shit to the point where it was just 20 seconds of my brain can't comprehend what's happening. Like the roller coaster, like. And it stopped and I was like, did I even like that? I don't even know if I enjoyed that roller coaster because it was just so fucking crazy and weird. That is this film. Apart from the, like, I guess the last half an hour, it kind of slows down a little tad and has a few good moments in it. Like when Kylo Ren, you know, he's got the blaster and stuff and he gets, there's, there's actually one cool moment where I literally turned and I went, that, that was really cool. My favorite moment in the film was when they did the force thing and then he pulls the lightsaber out, if you remember that bit. And then he fights the guys by himself. That was really cool. That bit was great, but, you know, she didn't even fight the Emperor, really. They literally, both of them join forces and go, June, and they're about to, you know, fight him, but they don't, and he just does lightning. It's not even a fight scene with him, really. It's just such a weird film. And I will address this. Everyone's everyone's getting really mad about the kiss between Rey and Kylo. 
and saying that it's not deserved and ooh, then was going to open up arms about it. I disagree. I think the kiss is fine because there was actually some like weird sexual tension in the last film, The Last Jedi. And I don't know, it just kind of, he really changed. Like he had that big story. I don't know. I think, I think, I think it works. I think the kiss is fine. Do I think if I was a director, would I put it in there? Probably not. But you need some some sort of kiss or something in fucking Star Wars. It's such a sexless, emotionless universe in that sense. It needs something, you know. No, Finn didn't get the girl. Poe didn't get the fucking girl. Nobody got anything really by the end of this. It just is. That's what I mean by I don't mind it. It's just it's just there. It just is. And I think that's me done talking about it. I've touched on a few topics, a few things about the film, but I'm not going to keep chewing your ear off. You know me, I'm not exactly one for structure of videos and structures of, you know, uh, points and all that kind of thing. So, anyway, leave a comment down below what you thought of Rise of Skywalker. I love to read them. And, uh, yeah, have a nice day, nice evening, nice morning. And may the Force be with you. Jokes, because the Force is shit now and Star Wars is never going to recover from this, let me tell you. Then again, the prequels, I said that about the prequels, so...